Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Bitcoin Podcast. This is the second episode. Uh, I'm Zayori. He, I guess, still goes by Hyper, but we're back for another one of these guys. The first one, a smashing success. Thank you, YouTube, for sharing your feedback, your beautiful comments with us. Uh, we read each and every single one, and uh, it was pretty much a, a spread of what we expected. So uh, please continue to share your feedback, questions, uh, whatever else, even content that you'd maybe even like to see us talk about um, on the comments below and uh, we'll at the very least read them i can guarantee that josh is a, a curious little beaver over there josh how you doing man how you feeling tonight hey i'm doing pretty good yeah i'm always trying to read up on on what's going out there and yeah if you definitely are interested in something leave in the comments uh i, I saw skin coin was of interest uh, i think you had mentioned it ac yeah so maybe maybe in the coming weeks we'll we'll take a look at that one and see exactly how how it works and everything yeah, absolutely. Um, skin coin's a weird one, and I was sort of hesitant to comment on it publicly because um, I wanted to understand it better. I actually did a little bit of outreach and got some feedback from one of their support people about how their system works. So I think that that'll be a good one a few episodes from now. We, we're still building that foundation, though, Block, uh, to, uh, today, Josh. We got to get into some of that basic stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. That That's uh, further down the line. Yeah. So uh, today, the main topic on the docket, breaking down the terms crypto as well as uh, the terms currency, because jammed together, they have very specific meaning. We all sort of have a, a general idea of what Bitcoin is, but um, the two aspects that are, are sort of misnomers, I guess, is the right word for it, right? The crypto side, where it's, it's not exactly completely anonymous, and it wasn't necessarily designed to be, and the currency side, um, is it actually currency? And um, what kind of diff uh, different definitions are we looking at? at when we talk about uh, defining what makes a new currency. No, no, that's definitely right. The, the name describes a huge range of different coins out there. And each of them are, for the most part, slightly different from each other. So, uh, yeah, to me, to me, it's a big misnomer since most of them, uh, I guess they're, they're not all anonymous and they're not all, uh, I guess, technically considered currency. Yeah, so maybe let's start with uh, the anonymous side of it, the actual crypto aspect. What, what are we working with? Can people track my Bitcoins or not, Josh? Yeah, so that's, that's a really interesting question. And for now, we'll focus on Bitcoin as that's the most popular one out there. Yeah. And Bitcoin, the, the big invention of it is kind of this like this open ledger that's built on a blockchain where every single transaction that's ever happened is on the blockchain. And it's basically available to everybody, everybody that runs uh, what I call the Bitcoin protocol. And so you can have a couple of unique things uh, with that. Uh, one, it, there is like no, no cost to open up a, a new Bitcoin account or address, or in this case, uh, I guess they're called wallets. Mm -hmm. um, you can basically just whatever, create one uh, at will. You don't need your ID or driver's license or go to a bank or anything mm -hmm. like that. You basically can just download this software and create an address out of nowhere. It's kind of like making a new Gmail account in some ways. You can just keep making new ones. You don't really need any data to verify it or any, or any specific um, uh, uniqueness, I guess, outside of the hash code. No, no, yeah, yeah, it's at zero cost. You you can make them at will, and some people that's how you keep some of the anon uh, anonymity. Yeah, I'm gonna mess up that word. Anonymity, uh, Josh, is that uh, what you're trying yeah. to say? The that, anonymity right. of it all. Give it a that's go. Right. Come on, one more. Anonymity. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll give you a pass. Anonymity. We'll we'll give you a a, a thrice mulligan here. Uh, that's right. But anyway, so you can keep making these new addresses, and that's how some of the. Uh, so the people try to like hide their transactions. Uh, they uh, instead of just just having one account or like a equivalent be like one bank account, since there's zero calls, they just keep opening new ones and yeah. they they yeah and can make this huge web and make it harder to trace transactions. Um, however, every transaction that ever happened is on the blockchain. So eventually, if you really wanted to, you could backtrack. Um, and trace uh, the the wild sources of all these transactions. Mm -hmm. So I think we have a website that that I found to be pretty cool. Yeah, uh, let's pull it up here. That, that kind of demonstrates this. So uh, what do we have here? The top 100 richest Bitcoin addresses. So seems like a lot of data uh, when you first take a look at it. But at the top, we've got this nice little breakdown of exactly what we're looking at here. Uh, on the left, balance refers to the amount of Bitcoins 
in that specific wallet or kind of bank address if you want to think of it that way. So uh, it starts from the, you know, the very small ones that either have no balance or a very, very tiny balance, 0.001 of a Bitcoin. Uh, that represents 58.4% of all Bitcoin addresses ever created to date. Um, so you can kind of follow that logic all the way down. And then at the end, you see that massive 100,000 to 1 million Bitcoins at one address. And there are only two of those um, in existence. So you can see if you look over to the right, uh, how many coins they actually have, what that's worth in USD, and then what percentage of the total coins um, out there this is representative of in that category. So kind of a, a cool concept just to put the whole thing in perspective. And as we scroll down, a little bit, um, you'll see those specific addresses listed in order of highest Bitcoin balance, uh, the highest of which being worth just shy of $500 million USD. So uh, a lot of data to digest there, but pretty fascinating nonetheless, Josh. Yeah, yeah. No, viewers can definitely take their time and kind of go through through this um because uh yeah it basically gives a breakdown of every single address out there mm -hmm. and so it's interesting just clicking on on the largest one since since it's right there um that has yeah just shy of of four uh or 500 million dollars yeah and um got it up okay so yeah if you click on it you get this chart basically of uh the uh the different amounts of bitcoin at any given time um as well as the usd conversion um and so you can basically see every single transaction um, and what block it occurred in uh, for sending money or uh, receiving money from this wallet address. So yeah, just kind of example to show you that uh, if you use one address out there and you don't change it, um, you basically can kind of see what's going on, what this person's been doing. I can, if this was, I guess, your or somebody else's bank account, you can basically see kind of like their wealth grow or shrink or change over time, yeah. Um, essentially. Yeah, so in in some ways, right, it's more public than we could ever imagine when you compare it to our, our traditional banking system. But in other ways, those entry and exit points of when you, you change the Bitcoins from Bitcoin to dollars or vice versa, that's where your information gets flagged. You know, stuff like Coinbase or GDAX, you have to put in your information before they'll let you put thousands of dollars into Bitcoins or buy thousands of Bitcoins. Um, so it's, it's sort of a cool concept in how it, it works both ways, but um, yeah, it's it's all there. That's kind of the point of the plot. The blockchain is that it's it's all publicly accessible and verifiable. So and that that's how it that's how it works. That's the magic of it, right? Yeah, yeah. No, that that's uh, I guess a strength and a weakness uh, of it. And that everything's public and no one has control over it. And uh, because of this, transactions can happen really fast at really low fees compared to traditional ways. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, everything is public. So there are some other cryptocurrencies that are trying to address this, trying to um, make it more anonymous and uh, kind of hide transactions that occur on the blockchain. And uh, I guess specifically, I know like Monero is, is one, and mm -hmm. I think there are a couple more out there. Uh, Monero is pretty popular. Uh, uh, I guess one of the more popular ones uh, that's trying to, yeah, I guess hide hide your identity. So of all, you know, we talked about Litecoin being intended to have lower transaction fees, be easy to trade quickly, and have it, you know, figurative, quote unquote, be a Litecoin. That that is the edge for Monero, is what you're saying is that it's somewhat anonymous. It's like pseudo anonymous, or at least it's harder to verify everything just publicly on the blockchain like that. Yeah, yeah, it, it's harder. May, maybe it can be backtraced, but the idea, I guess, of designing it, maybe they'll make. So another thing about okay. these uh, cryptocurrencies is they're Oops. always evolving. They can uh, improve over time, depending on what, uh, uh, in some, uh, it depends on who's control over the cryptocurrencies. It's also different cryptocurrency to cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. um, but they can evolve. So they can build in improvements to make stuff more anonymous or make stuff faster or, um, and stuff like that. Interesting. So uh, maybe let's switch gears and talk about the currency aspect of it and where Bitcoin falls on that spectrum. Um, I guess it varies country to country, whether or not Bitcoin is, is recognized as an official currency that you would record on your taxes and uh, report with, you know, I guess, capital gains like you would anything else uh, for, for an American reference. Um, where do we stand from the, the currency side of it? 
Yeah, no, no, that's definitely true. The currency standpoint. So uh, you have a lot of countries out there, obviously, and each one has slightly different rules. Um, I would say for for so far, um, the first gate is declaring whether cryptocurrency is legal or not. Um, and some countries haven't even done that yet. But the big mm -hmm. ones like China, uh, the US, Japan, um, some of the EU, they have set up rulings on like what it actually is. So first you have to say cryptocurrency is legal, um, which okay. which the US and, and China have done um, and some other countries. The second thing you have to do is kind of declare what it actually is. And so for the US currently, cryptocurrency is a form of property, kind of like your car or, or house and everything. Mm -hmm. And such that it, it takes on the, uh, the capital gains and loss um, kind of property uh, where um, you do have to pay taxes if you bought a lot of Bitcoin, um, its price rose, and then you sold that and converted back to U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's you have okay. to pay taxes on, on that gain. Yeah. So I'm just scrolling through the list right now. And honestly, there are not many countries where cryptocurrency is explicitly illegal. And the only ones that I'm seeing are Bolivia, Ecuador, Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan and Bangladesh. Outside of that, it's at least recognized by pretty much every other government. I mean, even like um, you know, like Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, countries like this are on the list where it's you know recognized as a legal form of tender. So um, that also you know puts it in perspective in terms of how uh, prolific um, Bitcoin has has become at this point. Yeah, no, definitely. And in the uh, landscape for how, um, uh, I guess, the legality of it and what it's considered is still evolving, too. Mm -hmm. So the IRS is called a property and they've released um, whatever guidelines on how uh, it should be taxed and in what cases and everything. But it's still pretty rough, I would say. I think there's still a lot of interpretation, I guess you would say, yeah. that, that's open to it in the U.S., and so probably close to tax season, maybe they'll come out with something more solid. Mm -hmm. um, I would hope so, because there are a lot of questions right now um, about uh, taxes yeah. and everything in cryptocurrency. Um, but right now, they basically said it's legal. They've published mm -hmm. whatever PDF with a bunch of rules and everything. Um, but yeah, they haven't wow. really gone and in depth uh, like analysis of it. Um, well, so it's I guess be interesting. baby steps, huh? And this is the first time that Bitcoins are worth really a, a significant amount of money. I mean, within the last year, especially, they've jumped up to be uh, folks that just bought a couple back in the day or had some left over if they had just used them three or four years ago. Um, it's actually worth a significant amount of money now. So it's becoming more relevant for even uh, casual Bitcoin users in the past. Correct. Um, Correct. Yeah. Uh, so... Now you have like banks and ETFs and all these investment firms actually mm -hmm. trying to get into it. Um, yeah. The last time this happened was I think in like 2013 where Bitcoin spiked to like $1,000 and it made like uh, whatever headlines and in the news and everything. And then it kind of lay dormant. And now this giant spike that's happened this past year, a lot more people have begun to get into it. And with the, yeah. the launch of all these ICOs and new cryptocurrencies has just... Uh, yeah, inflated the amount of people actually in it now mm -hmm. to uh, the point where it's it's very relevant right now. The the market cap is is very much up there in the in the billions. Yeah, it's insanity. It's um, it's 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 nuts, and it's already recovering. You know, looking at the numbers here, you can see some of the uh, the dips uh, on the GDAX chart. Even since uh, we last talked, it's been it's been good news, Josh. It's uh, up and up, back up to about 4,400. The recovery from that big exchange uh, shutting down in China. Uh, what's our last topic here, buddy? What is uh, the site with all the wallets? So the site with all the wallets. Um, so I believe you can look up any address. Um, I believe. If you, so if you like want to see what transactions go on an address similar to that website where you can click on it, mm -hmm. there are also websites where you can basically paste in those addresses and very similar, just see what transactions go on in, uh, in that wallet and everything. Okay. Um, yeah, most, most, uh, like wallet software now there, uh, most wallet software out there or change the addresses 
and uh, it's advised that you change your addresses for security purposes and everything. Right. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much pretty much it. The the site. Uh, you can wander around it, kind of see. I don't know the these these crazy uh, accumulations of Bitcoin and and wealth some of these wallets have. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's it's pretty fascinating just to digest the scale of it all. I think that's the part that always always gets me. You still kind of think of Bitcoin because it's new and it's not that established as um, you know, I, I guess kind of not that big in your head or it's sometimes hard to visualize the scale until you have a tool like this in front of you. So, um, all right, very good. Well, I think that brings us to a close, buddy. Another uh, quickie, uh, keeping these under 20 minutes, I think, so this content is nice and digestible and you know targeted around something specific with crypto or Bitcoin uh, or whatever else. Next time, I think we're going to break into actually buying Bitcoin for those that might be interested with, of course, the disclaimer of, as Josh put it, don't sell your car uh, to go all in on Bitcoin. I think, uh, is that the disclaimer you want to leave this with, buddy? No, definitely. Uh, just like any other investment, uh, stocks, bonds, ETFs, uh, whatever, whatever out, whatever is out there, um, mm -hmm. it's definitely good to diversify and not invest too much money in one thing or another. And definitely don't like, uh, I guess, spend the mortgage money or or the money you set aside for utilities, thinking that this cryptocurrency is going to go up and up and up forever. Um, if you have extra money lying around and you're looking at investments, uh, stocks, uh, for instance, maybe it's it's uh, it's uh, you can uh, take some some of that money and put it into uh, Bitcoin or one of these other cryptocurrencies. Yeah, but uh, well said. Slow and steady, and uh, yeah, don't spend money that you don't have to jump in unless. Um, you know, you're, you're prepared to use it or, or lose it rather, right? There's risk associated with any kind of investment. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. Who knows if China decided tomorrow that Bitcoin is all of a sudden illegal, uh, we'd have some pretty serious problem on our hands, you know, and who's to say that that's not going to happen, right? This is the Wild West. Uh, who's to say that couldn't happen in America? Remember the day that uh, America just came in and shut down all those poker sites? Uh, that that was pretty crazy, right? That was poker. That it was all a uh, currency based. It had to do with money. You never know, Josh, right? The cr crazier things have happened, right, pal? That's definitely that's definitely true. Yep. <laughs> all right, we'll leave it at that. Thanks, everybody. We will see you next time.